Hey there everybody and welcome to Introduction to Geometry Nodes, which is my series where I'm going to show you how to learn geometry nodes from knowing nothing the very beginning all the way, all the way to getting to an advanced section where you know everything that I know. So, uh, assuming that you've seen part 0, 1, and 2, at this point you know what geometry nodes is, it's a modifier, uh, you know how to do the node wrangler commands, and you know some simple stuff like how to make a very basic geometry node a modifier that turns anything to a sphere, or you can join objects, we talked about that too. In this part, we're actually going to be moving objects, and that is the key element to doing the project that I want to do in this video, which is taking an object, whether it be a cube, Suzanne, or whatever, and making a geometry nodes modifier that turns it into a snowman, which is a complicated shape. Um, but, uh, you know, there you have it. So, uh, let's open up Blender, and this is going to be a bit of a longer one, and it's going to be a bit more complicated, I would imagine, than the other tutorials. So. What is our goal again? It is to make a GeoNodes modifier that no matter what object we have, any orientation, any shape, uh, we add the GeoNodes group and it is going to make a snowman out of that. So uh, starting off with our cube, we're going to go to Geometry Nodes. We're either going to go to Add Modifier Geometry Nodes, click New, or again, uh, what you can do is just go New here directly and we're going to call this the Snowman Modifier. Now, let's think about what a snowman is. A snowman is basically not a cube. So I'm going to control right click drag to sever. We don't need this group input. I'm going to add a bunch of primitives and stuff here to make the snowman. So it's basically a sphere. Then on top of it, it's a smaller sphere. So notice we're going to need to make a sphere and move it upwards and make it smaller. That's going to be the transform. Uh, we're going to make another small one. It's going to be kind of like a cylinder shape with another cylinder, maybe some cylindrical arms or thin cubes and a cone. This is a nightmare image a cone for the nose. And you could get more complicated with the buttons and everything, uh, but that's what I'm gonna show you. So, starting off with the uh, sphere, uh, we, again, know how to make a sphere out of any object. We talked about literally how to make that modifier. So again, anytime you don't know uh, how to look something up, Shift A, right here, you can type in sphere. But we know that it's a primitive, and we're gonna be using a lot of primitives in this tutorial. So in Mesh Primitives, we have UV Sphere. So here we have a UV sphere. I want it to be way bigger. So I'm gonna take the radius or the size and bump it up to two. Next, I want another UV sphere, but this one should be moved up and be made smaller. And this is where we need to talk about transform. So one of the nodes that you need to know, and fuck if I know what category it's in, is the transform node. So you can just type that in. I would imagine it's in like mesh operations or something like this, but like, so you could go to mesh and you could look for transform I don't even know where it is, to be honest. But uh, transform, what it does is it takes an input, and we can change these purple inputs. Purple is not mesh, but it's a vector. It's number information, three-dimensional. Uh, we can change its translation, so x, y, and z. Its rotation, which you can't really tell that, obviously, because it's a sphere, but you can see it's rotating. And most importantly, it's x, y, and z scale, which we can change uniformly, OK? Point is, we have a sphere, and I'm gonna join. So remember, we have that control shift, uh, right click drag for join, or you can just add a, ge a join a geometry node. We have the original sphere connected with its transformed ver version. I'm gonna move this one up by two units, and I'm going to make this maybe 75% of the size. So 0.75, and you can kind of do this. So what we learned right now is that we can use a transform node to kind of do the uh, location rotation scale thing. It's the very basic uh, operation, right? Uh, that you learn with uh, editing or 3D modeling. Um, we have translation rotation scale. You can modify that for the sphere. So by the way, if you hit M, it's going to mute a node. So I'm actually just gonna view this right here. Oh, by the way, that's one shortcut I didn't show. Uh, to view something, it's Alt Shift uh, click. You're going to pick this up over time. But uh, either way, you can see here we have a sphere, and then we fed it through a transform node, and then it not only moves up, but it gets smaller. So that's what the transform node does. But then I took this version and this version, and I joined them together. So both are showing. And it's not like I connected them. They're actually intersecting, right? I just said, join them. Put one over the other, okay? To make the next thing, think about how to do it. Well, we can add a transform, and you can either transform the transformation, or you could transform the original sphere. There's a bit of a difference. Um, I'll let you think about that. Uh, we take this and we join it. Remember, we can have multiple inputs for a join. I'm gonna move it further up, maybe four units, 
and I'm going to make it 0.5 size. So originally we had a scale of, one, of 2. We made it 75% the size and then 50% the size. Uh, by the way, I just want to mention, this would have not been any different by adding another geometry node, join uh, geometry, and adding it this way. I think it's just much cleaner to say we're adding all the spheres in one join geometry. Okay? So there we go. In fact, uh, one way to organize this is in the same way that we had these reroute nodes that we talked about that lets us, like, you know, organize the connections. Uh, there's also in layout, you're going to see reroute, but also something called frame. What frame does is if you take a bunch of nodes, and so I'm just selecting all these nodes, and you put it inside the frame, it's just going to organize this um, a little. And you can select the frame and move the block. I think another way you can do this is I think you can... Uh, Select all of these and type in frame all. No, that's a different kind of frame. Well, there might, I think there's a command. It's like control, shift, P, control, P, alt, P, shift, P. It's shift, P. <laughs> um, that's going to put it in a frame. Um, so there we have all our spheres. Next, what I want to do is I want to add in the cone right here. Uh, luckily, there is a... Uh, geometry node mesh primitive for this, so we don't need to make a cone from scratch, even though we could. Uh, again, Shift-A to go to mesh primitives, and then we want the cone, so we select cone. Notice if we view the cone, unlike the sphere where we could only control the size and the resolution, in the cone we have the number of vertices, and you can play around with these to see what they mean. We have vertices, we have side segments that I'm going into wireframe to show you where those are. We have fill segments on the bottom, we have the top radius, so it's actually a cylinder that we've shrunk the uh, top down, and the bottom radius, and the height, okay? Uh, in other words, we have everything we want to control the cone. I'm going to take this and our join geometry, and I'm going to join both of these. So in other words, all our spheres, take those and join with the cone. And you can see our cone is resting where it was. Uh, to modify it, I'm going to, first of all, make it thinner. So we have something like this, making it less tall. And again, this is where our transform geometry node comes in. So I want to move this up. I want to have it rotating this way. So that is going to be on the x-axis, I believe. Nope. Y. Oh, wait. This is translation. On the x-axis, so that's by 90 degrees, a quarter of a rotation. So notice I'm doing a translation and a rotation in one group. That's totally doable. So I'm positioning this here, and then moving it along the y-axis right here. And this gives us our cone. Again, uh, because this is all procedural, and we haven't really talked about what that means, uh, but because this is all made with nodes, is another word for procedural, we can always go back before the transform and say, oh, I want it to be taller or not taller, right? We can always go back a node as long as we have all our connections here. So I'm just going to make this a bit thinner and a bit shorter. Okay, um, next, and by the way, there are ways to make this a lot fa faster. Like right now, I think I'm going to make the eyes. So we're going to add a sphere here and a sphere here. What would be faster is adding in one sphere and saying mirror that over to the other side, but we're not there yet. Um, so we'll get there. Uh, let's add in our eyes. So by the way, all of this, shift P to frame it. This is our um, cone. Next, I want to add in our eyes, so I'm going to do a UV sphere. I'm going to join these. I'm going to look through our perspective. Here's our other sphere. I want to transform this. First of all, make it way smaller and move it up. Whoops. And move it up to where the eyes should be. So I'm just going to move it a little on the x-axis and then move it, move it forward on the negative y. So something like this. Uh, but because the eyes are perfect spheres, it's going to look a bit weird. Uh, we can do some flattening on only one axis or the other. So I'm only um, flattening on one axis. And I want it to be a bit thinner like this. Uh, to make it sit on the face, I'm just, again, doing all these uh, transforms. I'm going to like flatten it so it has a bit of rotation. And then I'm going to move it back a little. And that looks a bit more like a eye. Um, we could also rotate it this way to fit the thing. And luckily, you're like, oh, do we have to do this all again for the other eye and make it look symmetric and figure out the exact numbers? Yes, but we, we can actually duplicate Shift-D. 
the transform node, use the same sphere. So we're using the same input. And then for the sphere, I'm going to add it to the join. Um, all I have to do is kind of the opposite. So if it's x is a negative 0.45, I make that positive 0.45. Now it's this way. Uh, the rotation, negative 14.8, make that 14.8. I'm just kind of reversing some of these numbers, 29.1. Maybe I do want this one to remain negative. Just play around. Uh, some of them should be flipped. Some of them should not. But you can see we very quickly mirrored this, not with a mirror modifier, but we could have. So we have all this. Uh, for the arms, we could either do a cylinder or we could do a very thin cube. And I'm thinking to get a nice variety, let's make a thin cube. So again, all of this, shift P, these are the, and by the way, I do believe we can name these. If you go into the frame, hit N, and then for the label, we could type in body. This one is the eyes. And this one is the, I guess it's the uh, nose. Uh, we have an organized thing. And by the way, just remember, this is all geometry nodes, if you didn't remember. But what, what I really want you to remember is all of this started as a cube. So really, all I'm doing here is I'm applying a modifier that turns this into a snowman. Notice, if I was to put a cube over here and said, uh, use geometry nodes with the snowman, it's just going to make a snowman with the transform of where I moved the cube. Or what I could have done is rotated our cube applied snowman, and now we get a rotated snowman. So it's just going to kind of use it as an instance in a sense, um, which we don't know what instances are, whatever. Uh, let's make arms. So I'm just going to move all of these here. Uh, for the arm, I'm going to use a cube, and we're going to turn this into a very thin cube. So again, we join. So here you can see our cube. Uh, this actually has our x, y, and z scaling in a sense uh, right here. So I'm going to make the x very long the y and z both like 0.2 okay and then i'm just going to transform it by saying you could either do this actually that's kind of a fancy solution uh, to get both arms as you can see or what we could do is i'm going to make this half the size so you could literally type divide by two and it's going to make it half the size you could do a transform you could do a rotating on the y-axis and i know it's y because that's the one facing us and that's the center of axis of rotation I want. So I'm just putting an arm here. Again, I duplicate this with the cube and join it and say, all I want to do is I want to do a bit of a reversal here. So instead of 26.9, I make it negative. And instead of negative 2.54, I make it positive. There we go. And notice that both of these are dependent on the same cube. So if I'm to make it uh, like this, I can change the uh, the thickness, the length of the arms, or I can make them like big wings that go either direction. And by the way, uh, this is going to be a bit more advanced, but I want you to notice that both of these are kind of dependent on each other in a sense. So one is like 26.9, call it 27 degrees. And again, I don't expect you to know what I'm doing right here, but just a bit of a taste. I'm using this as the Y component of the rotation. So nothing has, well, not nothing has changed. Apparently this uses radians. So something like this. And then I could do the same thing over here on the Y axis. So here's some nodes of a bit of what's in the future. A bit of a note of what nodes are in the future. You're going to notice that now with a single parameter, I can uh, update the rotation of both. And it kind of looks like flapping wings. Just so you know, uh, it does get way more complicated than just adding in things in the right spot. Um, OK, so I'm just waiting. There we go. So we've done this. Um, what else does the snowman have? I guess it has the hat is distinctive. So again, shift P to frame this. Call the frame arms. And finally, it seems like every single primitive we've wanted, we do have here. So in mesh primitive, yes, we do have a cylinder. So I'm going to join these either here or on another join geometry node. So basically we have a chain of what we're joining. We have the cylinder that I want to move. So I'm using a transform, moving it up. And again, just like all these other nodes with the cylinder, you can control the number of vertices, which is kind of like the resolution of it. Let me put this in solid view. The number of vertices, side segments, fill segments. What I care about is the radius and the depth, okay? 
So let me actually add more geometry here. I'm going to move this down. And this is roughly the radius I want and roughly the height or the depth I want. I'm going to take this. I'm going to do another transform, join this. And the only difference is this one. I want to be bigger on the x and y axis and thinner on the z, which is the same as decreasing the depth for another cylinder. And I'm just going to move this down. And there is our snowman. So again, any this is not at no point in this do you see group input. So it's not dependent on what shape we originally have. So again, we with Suzanne, we can apply the snowman. It's going to be right there. This is just a very fancy make anything a sphere modifier uh, that we made before, but now uh, with a lot more nodes. And actually, let's shift P this, and this is going to be our hat. So the difference is now we've joined and transformed a bunch of primitives. So just going back here, just looking at our progress, we have a sphere. We moved it up, we moved it up and joined them. That's one section. We had a cone and we transformed it and joined this together. For the eyes, we had a sphere that we kind of positioned one, positioned the other, and joined. For the arms, we had a thin cube that we positioned, positioned, and joined. And then for the hat, we had a cylinder that we positioned, rescaled, and joined. There you go. Um, so that is, I feel like that's like a good amount of progression <laughs> for a single video. Um, and I'm going to need to figure out what the next logical step is. Uh, for the next uh, tutorial because there's a lot of ways we can take this because now we know how to join transform whatever I'm thinking maybe the next obvious step is to go into edit mode because really what we're doing is removing stuff in object mode We're taking an object removing it uh, Translation rotation scale, uh, but we haven't like literally moved around vertices and stuff like this So maybe that's what we will do next, but uh, Just to review. I feel like this has been a long one uh, what we have done in this tutorial is learned about transform and kind of taken that to the max by, by doing a lot of join, a lot of transform, a lot of mesh primitives, and now we can make anything into a snowman. Now, maybe a step to take this a bit further is maybe I want to control the size of the snowman procedurally by just changing a number later instead of going into the nodes. Uh, we'll talk about that. But for now, uh, that is what we have, and I will see you on the next video.